Standard, everybody. Keep it going for yourself. Keep it going for spilt beer at the VFW, you guys. Right on. All right. Well, this is this is how I'm, I'm gracing the stage. This is what we do. This right here. It'd be funny if my phone just started shorting out from. All right, happy to be here. How are you guys doing tonight? Put your hands together for yourselves one more time. Oh, I was funny. Uh, we knew this was the Triple Falls show, but I knew we were coming to Mankato, and I came out here and I almost was like, how are you guys doing, Triple Falls? I, don't, I'm, I knew it was Triple Falls. I walked in, both Ira and I, other comedian, we see these TF everywhere. We're like, what the fuck is TF? We're dumb. We can't figure I'm like, oh, yeah, Triple Falls. We know what it is now, but wait, is it a place? Where are we? <laughs> it's like, and then Ira's like, Triple Falls is this building. I'm like, no, it isn't. This is, <laughs> this is the VFW. Keep it going for Zach, you guys. That was all. You know, I wasn't sure, but now I know he wants to fuck me, and I'm happy for that, too. Hell yeah, I'm happy about that. No, I'm, I'm happy about a lot of things. I'm happy, uh, you guys. Uh, I pooed today. Give it up for yourselves. Did you, anyone who pooed today? What, the rest of you are afraid to admit it, or are you still waiting for that one to come? It has, hasn't, met, hasn't emerged yet. Hey, it's, it's past seven at the VFW. If the poop hasn't come yet, I don't know if you want it to. Um, but I had what we call in the industry a dangler. Ladies and gentlemen, anyone familiar? You know, it was like a Mission Impossible turd. Like, it kept, like, repelling down, but it never dropped. Just held on. Um, and, I, you know, like, you know how you know the sound? You're, you're on there, and you're waiting for that sound of it dropping in the water, and it never came. What do you do in that situation? Right? Uh, you can't wipe it. You just smear it across your cheek. Might as well throw it against the wall in that case. I started swaying. Just a little gentle sway, getting a little rhythm going in it. And I felt it loosening up. It what didn't drop, but I felt it was like, that's working. And then I started singing to it, just a little, some oohs and ahs. Dropped out some Marvin Gaye, and boom, she dropped like a charm. I got an album coming out later, Turd Lullabies, you guys. If you need to put that dangler to sleep. Um, no, I, uh, I'm glad that happened at my house. And not in a public bathroom. You can imagine like a guy walking in, uh, using the stall next to me, picking up his phone. Honey, there's a guy singing to his asshole in here. It's like, I'm singing to my turd. It's different. Um, no, but uh, I think the last time that I did something embarrassing or could be embarrassing in a public bathroom, I was uh, in a stall with a couple other gentlemen, you know, doing what men do. Cocaine. Um, <laughs> no, uh, and it, somebody walked in, and they saw that there were three sets of legs in, in one stall, and they're like, this looks funny. And they had, like, this cute voice. They're like, what are you guys doing in there? And me, thinking on my feet, I just quickly said, we're taking a shit. Leave us alone. <laughs> and it worked, you know. I give it up for that, you know. We got a little bit left here. We have a little bit left. Oh, no. We're, we're, we're doing a recording tonight, you guys. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, Ira found out that as soon as we got here. Um, <laughs> it's like, I, I would have dressed different. No. no. Oh, I, uh, I'm from Minneapolis, though. Both of us, we rode down here together. Um, and I noticed a lot of things on the road, like there was a, a bumper sticker. It looked like a baby on board sticker. But when you got up close, it said, baby up in this bitch. I was like, I want that. I, I, I don't even have a kid. Isn't that cool? You're like, oh, I want. No, I mean, it, it, would someone give me a hard time for having that and not having a kid? Is that like appropriating dad culture? Is, 
I got to tell dad jokes if I start doing that. No, I mean, if, if they do, I'll just flip the words around. Bitch up in this baby, am I right? You know, I'm the bitch, you know. Uh, but uh, there, there was a homeless guy. I mean, that's not the funny part. Uh, sometimes it is. No, uh, he had a sign that said, it's my birthday. And I thought, that's a cool sign. I hope it's true. And I pulled up, and I, I, di- I did look. I didn't have any change, any cash on me. Um, and the guy's like, hey, man, can you help? And I'm like, ah, I'm sorry, man, I don't have anything. And he's like, it doesn't cost you anything to wish me a happy birthday. And I had to face the truth that he was right, and, and, and I should just wish him a happy birthday, and I was about to, but the light turned green. So, I mean... I can't be holding up traffic for a happy birthday request. Um, no, the, uh, one of the things I noticed just the other day, I've lived in Minneapolis for about six years, and I just noticed the other day on Lowry there's this gas station with a big sign that says, Pump and Munch. I love how you're like, mmm. And I got so excited, I called my mom right away. I'm like, Mom! Mom, there's a sign that says pump and munch. Isn't that cool? And she's like, your father preferred come and go. Um, I was like, oh, thanks, Mom. No, but she's a, my mom is a cool lady. She's a Marine. Give it up for Marines. I mean, we're in a VFW. You better. I saw a bunch of Marine hats. Um, but no, I'm, I'm happy that she's a Marine, and she's got a good sense of humor, and she raised me. And I, I remember the, one of the things she joked about, we were at the last Thanksgiving dinner, and this ad uh, for Blue Lives Matter came on the TV. And she's like, you hear that, Larry? That's my stepdad. She goes, Blue Lives, Blue Lives Matter. There's blue people now. I haven't, I haven't met one yet. I haven't seen one. But they matter. We need to make sure that the blue people are protected. Um, she's a good lady, though. She, like I said, she... Uh, she also introduced me to a lot of a lot of good music growing up. Um, I'm a big fan of old R&B, old soul, like like Tina Turner, Otis Redding, The Temptations. What do you guys just like Waylon Jennings? What is this? <laughs> no, I mean I love The Temptations. They can take a song about kidnapping and still make it romantic, right? <laughs> I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. I asked my lawyer friend, thank you, but I asked my lawyer buddy, that's by the book kidnapping. That is like right down the line. It's like, well, did you hold her against her will? I did. Uh, well, that's not romantic anymore. Uh, but uh, I think because I've listened to, uh, I, I love these old songs, and now I go back and listen to the lyrics more closely, it forced me to overanalyze lyrics. Like, who knew Young Girl was about a pedophile? Um, and so I was listening to the song Brick House by the Commodores. All right. And there's this line in there where, uh, you know, they're talking about the girl, and then he just goes, 36, 24, 36, want a winning hand? We all know what he's talking about now. But think about the first guy that said that. Like you're in a club, you're next to your buddy, and you're like, man, that girl's really fine. Check her out. He's like, yeah, man. She's 36, 24, 36 fine. You're like, what, what, what the hell? What do you mean? What is that? What are you talking about? So those are, those are her measurements. So why do you know women's measurements, dude? Are you a tailor? No, no, I, I'm not a tailor. Are you a serial killer? What? No, I, I just think it's funny that we all know that now, and, uh, and it's just, yeah, we're moving on. We're moving on. Uh, no, but uh, speaking of women with, with nice measurements, I was on a date recently. Your boy dates. Can I get, can I get a hand for... Um, we were, I was driving. She was in the passenger seat, and she turns to me and says... John, you do realize that you've read every sign we passed aloud. <laughs> and I got nervous. I didn't know what to do. I was like, so I just read the first sign that I saw. Uh, and I know now that this is a, a restaurant called Chindian. It's a Chinese-Indian fusion restaurant. But the logo on the sign, it said Chin, 
and then in the middle it's this little noodle bowl with chopsticks coming out of it, and then Dian. And I thought that that little noodle bowl was an artistic letter A. So I was like, have you been there, Chinadian? And she's like, what did you call it? And I'm like, I'm probably getting the name wrong, but I think it's a Chinese-Canadian fusion joint. <laughs> they have egg rolls dipped in maple syrup, uh, among other things. Um, but now, you know, I'm, I'm single, if that explains anything. Uh, these are my dating escapades. Um, now, anybody, I mean, like, I see a lot of couples here, but anybody done or on the online dating? Yeah. All right, yeah, isn't it awful? Isn't it a, just a shit show? Um, but uh, I feel like it's harder for the ladies. I, I will admit that. I feel like if you're a guy, or if you're a girl looking for a good guy, you're probably looking for a needle in a haystack. <laughs> Whereas most guys are looking for a willing haystack, just whatever they can throw it to, right? Just bring that haystack right over here, right? Uh, but uh, one of the mistakes I make is I read the profiles. I, I don't recommend this. It's, it's not good. Like this one girl, she put, I'm an introverted extrovert. What does, that, what does that mean? Anybody? I can't get away with shit like that. Like, what am I going to put? I have a big dick at heart, ladies. <laughs> deep, deep down. You got you to gotta uncover it. It's, it's there. One girl, and it was sometimes scary. One girl, her profile was all caps. It said, my daddy didn't raise a pussy. I was just born with one. I was afraid to unmatch with her. I'm like, she's going to track me down. <laughs> My daddy didn't raise a quitter. Um, but it's not all bad. Every once in a while, you find a winner. This one girl, her profile was short and sweet. My favorite food is potatoes, and I'm not really into books. <laughs> Might be in love, you guys. Might be. No, uh, but communication I know the other mistake that I make on there, th you know, this might be, it's more common in Minnesota. I always give the first photo the benefit of the doubt. If, if I see it and I'm like, nope, not feeling it, I still go to the next one. I'm like, let me try. You know, maybe she just chose to lead with an awful picture. Um, <laughs> and I, then this is where I run into the problem. I'll go to the next picture and I'll be like, oh, guys, that dog is so cute. I did it again. I liked with an, I matched with another dog. This keeps happening. It keeps happening. You get a message. Hey, how's it going? I'm like, hey, Linda, I'm here for the pug. When can I go to the park? That's all I want to know. Um, even even when the when you you match, you meet up, things are going well. Um, the communication is difficult for me. Like I was dating a girl um, uh, that I met on one of the apps, and, and she uh, had just moved here from China. She spoke really good English, was way more intelligent than I am, but she was like, I want to learn a little bit about you. What kind of music do you like? So I played for her a bunch of music that, that I like, you guys know. And this is what she said. You like a lot of music where the singer goes, ah! Yeah, that's soul, baby. That's soul right there. No. All right, communication, even when you make it in the bedroom, for, is weird for, for me. Uh, I, I was with a lady. We were, uh, we were engaged in the act of coitus, you know? We were uh, positioned in the style of the dog, as one does. And I looked down, and I was in one of those moments where you should just think something, but I said it. And I said, you have an immaculate butthole. <laughs> and she turned around. She's like, what did you say to me? And I'm like, I said it, I said it, you have an immaculate butthole. And then the next, like, five minutes of sex was me explaining in great detail how much I'm not into buttholes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we got there. We accomplished that mission. Yeah, right? But, uh... <laughs> I told that once, and this girl that I was dating who heard it was like, have you ever had your butthole licked? Did your asshole eaten? And I'm like, no, I can't say that I have. And she's like, I bet you'd like it. You know what? I know you'd like it. And I'm like, you're real confident. Um, you must be good at this. And she's like, no, I've never done it. And I'm like, you've never done it, but you're that confident, and you want to start with my asshole. What's going on here? 
No, I, I did tell that joke, though, and my Marine mom was in the audience once, and she came up to me after the show, and the first thing she said was, I like that one about your immaculate butthole. And I'm like, it, was, it wasn't mine, but thanks, Mom. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, you, you guys are really fun. This, this is a whole lot of fun. What are we at here? Oh, man. I do need a beer. I need an... Uh, oh, shit. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. What was I talking about? Buttholes? All right. You know, you ever get where the ladies, they ask you to, uh, to send them nudes? Stuff like that? Or they send you... This one girl, she sent me a nude video of herself and then said, I want you to film a video of yourself reacting to it. And I'm like, I'm not a YouTuber. What is this? It's like, it's like okay, you see, at the 45 second mark, we can really shoot. No. Uh, but uh, any of you guys have ever sent a dick pic, gentlemen? I know you guys must have did it with a Polaroid first, but. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I did too. I'm. Uh, yeah. No, I, I actually, uh, to be honest, I have never sent a dick pic in my life. Well, that's not honest. Uh, I have sent one one time in my entire life. It was unprovoked, though, or un unsolicited. It was unsolicited. That's the worst ones, right? But it was to my girlfriend at the time, and she was standing about 10 feet from me. Ladies, do you give me a break on this one? So she wanted to do this thing. We, uh, we just got home from somewhere, and she wanted to do this thing in the living room with me where she was going to you know, have a conversation with someone while you're completely just looking at your phone. She's like, hey, babe, so like, what? I'm over there. She's like, hey, babe, like, so what are we supposed to do this weekend? And I'm like, are we supposed to, isn't there like a family thing at your mom's house? She's like, yeah, but I don't know, like, I mean, after that. And she didn't look up from her phone at all, so I'm just like, And then, and she's still on her phone. She's like, w w you sent me a message? I got to go to the bathroom. And then, she went to the bathroom. I don't know what she did in there still to this day. Oh. No, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, dicks, if, if you guys are all right with that. Are you a crowd? Can I hear a round of applause? Who's okay with dicks? Couple gentlemen and all the ladies. I love it. All right. No, um, I got told by the last three women that I dated, you've got a nice dick. And I do not know for the life of me what that means. It's not big. It's not, I mean, I'm, I'm single. It's not like it's getting massive repeat business. It's not like there was an additional alert sent to Triple Falls, this imaginary place. But I don't understand it, but, but then I figured it out. It's friendly. It's got a generally good outlook. And it's never won a Super Bowl. My dick is Minnesota nice. <laughs> All right, so I, I went to a massage parlor. This, the only material I had related to me being a boxer or a boxing trainer is about a massage parlor. Um, but I am a boxer. I do train uh, boxing at Columbia Heights Firehouse Gym. So my shoulders get sore quite a bit. So I went to this massage parlor. I'm not going to mention the name. It's Vita Day Spa in Shoreview. Um, <laughs> but do you guys have a... Is there a Triple Falls massage? Is <laughs> That sounds like, that sounds risky right there. Um, so I went there because I was very sore. I went for a 30-minute massage. It, it was great. They, they, they started with, I was laying on my back. They started with my, my chest, worked my way down my abdomen, did my legs, came back up, had me flip over, did my whole back. It was great. The only thing that I could think of that was shady was on the way out, the Asian lady at the counter, she says, next time you come, you pay cash, you pay less. And I was like, ooh, tax evasion. I can get with this. All right. 
I, hell yeah. Um, so I went back, and I'm like, it was a really good experience last time, and it was like a couple weeks later I was sore. I'm like, I'm getting the hour this time. Um, so she starts, uh, same lady, she starts doing her thing, starting with the shoulders, working the way down, the abdomen, uh, does the thighs, comes back up. It's right at the point where she's about to flip me over, and she just grabs my dick. And she goes, you want me to do this? And uh, I froze. Uh, part of the reason, because I'm a gentleman. I'd already taken care of myself before I went there. <laughs> I'm not going to go there and run the risk of... I'm like... So I, I just looked at her, and she said again, you want me to do this nice Minnesota dick? No, she did not say that last part. <laughs> uh, but she goes, you want me to do this, yes or no? And when she said yes or no, she, sque she squeezed it. You want to do this, yes or no? And I said, I didn't come here for that. And she goes, yes or no? And I felt like I was going to like maybe I'd make her feel bad. So I'm like, uh, sure. Um, so she starts going at it, trying everything in the book, pinching my nipple, uh, all this stuff. Um, Finally, she gets the job done, takes me to this little spray table, washes me off. I leave feeling shameful. I tipped her. Um, and then I told my friend about it, and I was like, uh, I told, it was a lady friend. I was like, yeah, I, uh, you know what? She had her hands on me. And I felt really uncomfortable, and I wasn't sure, and I didn't want to hurt her feelings, and I didn't want to, like, I just felt like it'd be easier to just let it happen. And she goes, oh, congratulations. You know what it's like to be a woman. <laughs> and I'm like, holy crap, I got sexually assaulted at a massage parlor. I'll put her there, man. <laughs> all right. But in all seriousness... What if the gender had been flipped? What if it had been a gentleman who grabbed me and said, you want me to do this? It would have been a little bit different, but you guys are wonderful. Thank you, Mankato. Thank you, Triple Falls. I'm John Sanders. You guys have a good night.